Good evening and welcome back to Higher Chemistry. I was tempted to open uh, this particular video with a lyric from Bob Dylan, but I, or Jimi Hendrix actually, his version is more famous, uh, with a line from All Along the Watchtower. Instead, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do today. I would like to throw four chemistry terms at you. These four are frequently muddled up with each other. They are related to, well two of them are related to esters, and in the very near future we'll also have a look at other related proteins as well. Uh, the other two sound very similar, but are absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with each other, with uh, esters and proteins. Let's have a look at these two terms here. Condensation and hydrolysis. Now, these two are related to each other in that they are effectively opposite signs of a coin. They are the precise opposite chemical reaction to each other. The other two um, that we're going to have a look at are hydration and hydrogenation. Uh, it would actually be easier if we pronounced hydrogenation as hydrogen because then the clues in the word. These two are also related to each other, but most definitely not opposites. They are effectively two examples of the same type of reaction. Um, so these are brothers, if you like, whereas these two are opposites to each other. And we're going to have a look at uh, how both of these work. Sorry, both of these sets of terms work tonight. I think I'll start with these two, because these two are very much related to making and breaking esters. These two um, were actually hangovers from National 5, but you're still expected to be aware of how they work. Um, so let's start with condensation and hydrolysis. I'll just get myself a fresh sheet of paper. Yeah, so in edu-speak terms, the learning outcomes for this particular video are to make you bang up to date with the definitions of these four words. Um, and we're going to start with condensation and hydrolysis. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, and these are to do with esters. Uh, they are also, later on, to do with proteins. But we'll stick with the esters just now, because that's what we've done recently. So if we were to take an alcohol, for example, propan 1 -ol. Oh yeah, I, before I leave uh, tonight, I want to give you an example of a sort of nasty problem-solving A1s involving making weird-looking esters. You don't have to name them, um, but uh, you'll see what I mean when I come to it. Don't worry. It's, it's to do with um, alcohols that don't have the hydroxyl on the end. Um, so secondary alcohols, or tertiary alcohols in other words. Uh, let's pick a carboxylic acid. Let's go with my least favourite carboxylic acid in the universe, which is butanoic acid, because it smells like vomit, because it's in vomit. Please excuse me tonight, it's late and I don't feel like putting the hydrogens in, except the ones that are important. Let's join these two molecules together. Now, if we pick the colour code that I was using in this first Slide here, we've got in lovely, shocking pink, condensation. So let's join these two together. Uh, and if you remember from the last video, you want to pause the video here and test yourself. How do these actually join? <coughs> As I cough in your ear. Then the answer is we take the, the hydrogen and oxygen from there, and we take the hydrogen from there, and they fly off to form a water molecule which I'm writing just in that weird way, because that's how it's come from it. Um, and we'll take these one, two, three carbons here. That oxygen stays. That carbon is still linked to a double bond to an oxygen. And then we have the three other carbons in here. So uh, once again, if you fancied testing yourself, feel free to pause this video and tell me the name of that ester. Um, if you've done that, hopefully the name you came up with was propyl butanoate. So that is propyl butanoate. And making uh, is a making the ester, I apologise. What we've done is we've joined two smaller molecules together to make a larger one 
by removing the elements of water. That is the definition of a condensation reaction. I'm just going to pause this for a second, write the definition out. There's no point in wasting your life watching me do that. So, as I said here, condensation is joining two smaller molecules to make a larger one by removing the elements of, usually, water. You know, put a weasel word in there. If they wanted you to remove something else other than H and OH, they'd probably do it in a problem-solving context, and they'd have to give you an example of how it can be done. So don't sweat that too much. Basically, it's you're plucking out an H and an OH, and you're joining these two molecules together. If In business terms, if you had a number of multiple businesses and you condensed them into a single business, which was larger than all the small ones, you know, that's a way of remembering it. Um, I'd, I'd really rather use a better word than that, frankly, because condensation has other definitions in chemistry. I don't know what they think they're doing. Anyway, let's move on to the complementary reaction. I said they were opposites of each other, and this whole system is in equilibrium. So uh, if I stick to the coloured code from the start of the video, this one here, this is breaking apart an ester. Now, when we're in the lab, we will have a go at this. Uh, you take an ester, basically, and plonk some water into it and then leave it for an hour or so. Uh, and it slowly rips apart uh, until it comes to an equilibrium balance. Now, my class have done equilibrium. I haven't done a video on it yet, but I will do in the future, hopefully, if time allows. So, back to this. The definition of hydrolysis um, is basically the exact opposite of this. Condensation was joining two small molecules together to make a bigger one by removing water. So if you completely flip that on its head, you're going to end up with a big molecule, which you're going to crack apart into two smaller ones by adding water. I don't have to write that out, do I? I better write it out. I'll be professional, but I'll just not make you watch me do it. So yeah, hydrolysis is breaking a larger molecule into smaller ones by adding water. As, as you can see, these two are opposite to each other. Uh, just before we leave this behind, I have seen the SQA do s some horrible, wicked ones, including the fact that, uh, I, I remember once a few years back, they had a cyclic molecule. And it looked something like this. It was a cyclic ester, in fact. Um, and if you break that apart, you recreated a carboxylic acid on here and created this as an alcohol. Technically speaking, that is still hydrolysis, even though you're not really making two smaller ones. You know what? You're still breaking. Uh, we were still breaking the ester linkage, which I really should highlight here. Remember, that's the bond that breaks when you're going that way. Uh, and I think we're done with esters. Was, oh, no, we're not. No, there was that horrible problem solving involving secondary alcohols. Check this out here, folks. If you have got a secondary alcohol, something like this, uh, and we'll just stick with butanoic acid as we had last time around. Now, this is the way the SQ will write it. And then people are left thinking, uh, how does this stick? You don't have to stick that to there. It's just habit. Take charge of your molecules. Lift this molecule up, turn it around and redraw it if you want. That's probably the easiest way to do it. So if we turn that round now, now it becomes a lot easier to form the ester. The good news is, by the way, you're not required to know how to name branched esters, but this is a frequent one where they ask you to draw the structure of the, the ester from the secondary or tertiary, of course, if there was a oh, sloppy, I didn't put that agent, sorry. If there was another carbon here, it would be a tertiary alcohol, which does indeed form esters. I know you can oxidize tertiary alcohols, but this is an oxidation. This, if you were paying attention, is this. So, um, once again, we'll team that up with that, and then just copy the, the atoms that stay in one place. So, that stays, that's gone, that stays... And then we have another three carbons tacked onto here. And that is the structure of the ester you make from secondary or primary, sorry, or tertiary alcohols, apologies. But remember, this they will, of course, draw it that way. But yeah, don't be pushed around. You take charge of your molecules, take them up, lift them around, twist them around, whatever way suits you best for drawing the structures of the esters. Happy with that? 
Excellent, we're halfway through this, shouldn't take long. We'll just have a look at these brothers here. Hydration and hydrogenation now. Sorry, run out of paper. How unprofessional. Find yourself a better YouTube tutor. The colours we had were um, dark blue for hydration, hydration uh, and hydrogenation, as I said, are brothers in that they are examples of the same type of reaction. They are examples of addition reactions uh, or hydrogenation. Now, addition reactions were introduced to us all the way back in National 5. Uh, and basically what you need is you need to have a double bond between some carbons uh, and you are going to split one of these bonds so you're going to break one of them um, and in the case of hydrogenation which is the easiest one we're going to add hydrogen to this so we're going to break that bond here we're going to bring a hydrogen molecule in um, and we're going to tack that carbon onto that hydrogen, that carbon onto that hydrogen, uh, and you end up, whatever you started with, containing the double bond. I've just done the double bond. I do apologise. So we're going to have that and that. There would have been a hydrogen on here as well, of course, or possibly something else. Don't let that distract you. You're now going to have that added onto it. Not the most interesting reaction in the universe. However, it turns out to be really handy if you want to make, I can't believe it's not butter. Or alternatively, just butter you can spread from the fridge. Because because I'm very old, when I was a boy growing up, the butter that you took out the fridge was similar, similar to a house brick, basically. And if you tried to spread it on bread, it would just mash up all the bread. Nowadays, we're all spoiled with this wonderful soft, I can't believe it's not butter. That's because it's not butter. And it involves this reaction here, but we will come back to that in the video on fats and oils. Um, let's have a look at this for a second. Hydration, very similar idea. We're going to break one of these bonds and we're going to keep the rest, and there would have been a hydrogen or something else again on there, but we're going to keep the rest of the molecule intact. And this time around, we are adding on water. Um, the clues in the hydra bit, as in hydrating a person. Well, we're going to hydrate a molecule. Now, uh, the water, of course, we can draw the water molecule like that. Uh, and over here, we split the hydrogen bond, uh, the hydrogen between the two hydrogens here. Here, we have two bonds, and we can split either one of them. Makes no difference. So you're going to join hydrogen to one of these carbons, and you're going to join the hydroxyl to the other carbon. So we are, in fact, making an alcohol. So that's what hydration makes. It makes alcohols from alkenes. Hydrogenation makes sat it makes uh, alkanes from alkenes. So in other words, you're turning... Please remember, of course, that these are described as unsaturated. When you have a double bond, that's unsaturated. S for single bonds, S for saturated molecules. That bond there, that bond there. Um, and you can turn alkenes into alcohols. Uh, I know I haven't made my alcohols video yet. It's in my list of things to do, though. Um, that, I think, we're done for tonight. Um, so hopefully you can see why these ones are examples of the same type of reaction. They are examples of addition reactions. This, this, These two reactions here, brand new to us, um, and totally opposite to each other, and very much involved in making esters and breaking esters. They will also be involved in making proteins, and breaking proteins. Um, but that's a video for another time. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.